Long ago, in a village in the far north, there lived a young man named Evango. He was the oldest of the family and had four brothers and a little sister, eleven or twelve years old. One clear spring evening, the little girl was playing out on the sandpit with some other children. They were playing hows, and on the beach near them was the huge skull of a whale. No sooner had she sat down, than suddenly the skull began to roll quickly toward the sea. It moved so fast and the child was so frightened that she just held on tight and screamed. All the little ones ran after her, adding their cries to hers, until the skull plunged into the waves, turned into a whale and, with the little girl still clinging to his back, swam away out of sight on the gray ocean. The children ran out into the water as far as they could, calling to their little playmate, but soon she was gone from sight. A sad troop of weeping children ran to Evango's igloo to tell him what had happened. Evango and his brothers were in despair, for they loved their sister very dearly, as indeed did everyone in the village. That very night in the Casca they held a council as how best to find the little girl and bring her home again. Evango called all the shamans or witch doctors to his house and bade them sing, hoping that they would sing something about his lost sister and where she had been taken. But each one told him a different tale, so that he soon saw that they knew nothing at all about it. So he sent them all away again. Now there was one woman among his neighbors who was very wise, although not a sorceress. This woman could sing about many things that no one else knew. So Avango sent for her and told her to sing. After a while she began. She told Avango and his brothers that the whale had taken their sister to a far-off country. This country, she said, was guarded by two great cliffs of solid rock, which could open wide apart and then come together again with a crash like thunder, crushing to death any living creature daring to venture between. Evango asked her what they must do to rescue their sister. She answered, you must make a skin boat so swift that it will go faster than the swiftest bird can fly. When the boat is finished, kill a young seal and take it with you. When all is ready, I will go with you to tell you what to do. They thanked the woman very much and went to work to make the boat as soon as it was daylight. They worked as quickly as they could for they were very anxious to rescue their sister. When they had finished, they took the boat down to the shore and waited for a bird to come along. Presently they saw a beautiful gray gull with a white breast, sailing gracefully through the sky. They got into the boat and paddled along as fast as they could, but the gull was soon far ahead of them, and they could not catch up with it at all. This was a dreadful disappointment, for it meant a long delay. They came back to land very much discouraged, but Evango said, We must not lose heart so easily. Let us go to work at once and take more care this time that we are doing our very best. It does not pay to be in too much of a hurry. So they started making another boat, and this time they worked very carefully, for they must not fail a second time. They made the frame out of the lightest driftwood and covered it with white whale skin. First they wet the skin to make it soft, then stretched it over the frame and tied it in place with rawhide. 
When the skin dried, it became tight over the frame and was quite waterproof. Ivango, who was a very strong man, made a paddle for himself from the shoulder bone of a whale. When they had finished the second boat, it looked fine and they all felt happy again, but it had taken many precious days to make. When all was ready, they got into the boat and raced with the first gull that came along. This time they beat it easily, so they came back to shore to get their provisions and to kill a baby seal to take with them. The woman, who was waiting to go along too, told them that they must watch for a flock of ducks and follow them closely. Pretty soon a flock of ducks flew over. The brothers and the woman got quickly into the boat and paddled off as fast as they could. When the birds sank to rest, the men would stop paddling and rest, also, or eat. When the ducks flew, the boat traveled along as swiftly as though it too had wings. When the ducks slept, the men stopped paddling and also slept, while the woman kept watch. When the birds rose again to fly, the woman would awaken the men and take her turn at sleeping. They traveled this way for many days and nights, until at last they could hear a faint, rumbling noise like distant thunder. The sound lent renewed strength to Ivango's mighty paddle. So powerfully did he wield it that they went faster than the ducks, who were leading them straight to their sister. Nearer and nearer they came to the strange sound, and louder and louder it grew until it seemed as though mountains of rock were being hurled together by the hands of some mighty giant. Soon they could see two great cliffs drawing swiftly together through the ocean. They met with a mighty crash that seemed to shake the sea and sky. Ivango had trouble in keeping the boat upright. So high were the waves made by the rocks when they came together. As the boat came nearer, the cliffs slowly drew apart, and some sea parrots and seals tried to pass through the opening. But the rocks rushed together and the birds and seals were caught and crushed to death. Ivango felt his heart fail within him. Could they ever pass through alive? Or must they all be crushed like the animals and birds? It did not seem possible that they could ever reach the other side of the cliffs. Oh, if they only might fly over in the sky like the ducks were doing, then they would be safe. The Van Gogh, however, had not time to think about it. He must act quickly, or the ducks soon would be out of sight, and then they would have no one to show them the way to their sister. So when the cliffs parted again, Ivango wielded his mighty paddle and the little boat shot into the foaming pass. It seemed as though they must be drawn down into the whirling waters and be drowned. But Ivango gathered his strength into one mighty effort just as the towering walls started to come together. And when they met with a deafening roar, Ivango and his little boat were safe in the quiet waters beyond. At last they had reached their journey's end and passed safely through the great danger. How happy and thankful they were to leave the menacing rocks behind. They landed near a sandy cliff and walked carefully behind one another so as to make only one track in the sand with their mukluks. Their mukluks are their seal boots. Then they dug a hole in the ground, put the boat in it and hid. 
The next day while Avango was peeping out of the hole, he saw a man walking toward the cliff from the opposite direction from which they had come. When he reached the footprints on the sand, which looked as though only one person had walked up from the beach, he stopped and examined them carefully for a long time. Then, jumping over, so as not to step on them, he went his way. After a while, the man came back. This time he did not stop, but jumped over the footprints and went on. On his back, he was carrying a lot of birds. Now one of Avango's brothers was very brave and wanted to jump out to kill that man and take the birds, but Avango would not let him. Soon another man came along, and seeing the track, stopped to examine it, then jumped over, just as the first man had done. When he came back with all the birds he could carry, the brave brother could wait no longer. They were all hungry and tired and wanted the birds for food, so he sprang out and captured the man and hid him back of the hole. Then they all had those fine birds to eat. In the morning, being rested and refreshed, Evango and his brothers got into their boat and paddled in the direction from which the men had come walking along the beach. Soon they saw a village in the center of which stood a large igloo. Evango and the brothers felt sure their sister must be there. So Avango went to the door of the igloo and entered. Sitting on a big white bear skin on the floor was his sister, looking very sad and lonely. When she saw Avango, she sprang up joyously, but quickly put her finger to her lips, which meant, Be quiet! and whispered to Evango, Oh, brother! You should not have come for me. The whale man is waiting to kill you. She looked terribly frightened, but Evango comforted her, saying, That's all right, sister. We came for you and will die if we have to. Before long, they heard the whale man coming in. He pretended to be a kind man and very polite, but Avango knew better than to believe him. The whale man could not fool Avango. After a little while, the whale man told Avango to fetch his brothers to eat supper with them, and the brothers came. The whale man gave them a good supper with plenty to eat, but they watched carefully for they knew that he was just waiting for a chance to do them some harm. When night came, the whale man suggested that they play all sorts of games. Avango beat him every time, and he did not seem to like that at all. The next morning, he took them out to see a big ditch that had been dug during the night. All the men of the village were bringing logs of wood and skin bags of oil to the ditch. The whale man called Avango and told him to look down into the ditch, and while he was looking gave him a shove. Avango, taken by surprise, lost his balance and fell in. Down went Avango into the deep dark hole. When he reached the bottom, he stood still and felt the sides of the ditch all about him, until suddenly his hands came upon a great stone embedded in the earth on one side of the hole. Digging quickly into the earth with his fingers, he dragged out the huge stone and found a deep hole in the earth back of it. Into this hole he crept pulling the stone into place after him. Outside, the whale man built a big fire with logs and oil and shoved it into the pit, 
thinking that a Van Gogh would be burned up. But a Van Gogh was safe behind the rock, and the fire never even singed his mucklucks. When the flames had died down and there was nothing left but ashes, he crept out from his hiding place and called for someone to let down a rope for him to climb up by. Soon he saw the rope coming down. It was made of walrus hide, such as is used for lashing boats. Evango took hold of the end of the rope and his brothers pulled him out. The whale man stood there looking much surprised to see him come out unharmed, and Evango, springing upon him, hurled him into the pit. Then turning to the people, Evango said, If this man is unkind to you, bring some more wood and oil, and we will burn him up. If he is good to you, let down the rope again and pull him out after we have gone away. No, no, they shouted loudly. We do not want to pull him out. He is not good to us at all, but very wicked and cruel. Let us burn him up. And they all ran to bring more wood and oil much more than before and made a great fire themselves and threw it into the pit before Evango could stop them. Evango and the brothers and their little sister hurried down to the sea, where the woman was waiting for them with the boat, and started off for home as fast as they could paddle. This time they passed through the moving cliffs without fear or trouble, but no sooner had the cliffs closed together behind them than a big white whale rose to the top of the water and pursued them. Although they could make the boat go as fast as the swiftest bird, the whale was faster than they and was getting very close. Just as the monster rose beside them, the woman cut off the right flipper from the seal they had brought with them and threw it to the whale, which stopped to eat. This gave them time to get quite far ahead, but after the whale had finished eating he soon caught up with them. Then the woman threw out the left flipper. Again the whale stopped to eat and again caught up with them. But they were nearly home, so they threw over the rest of the seal and paddled to shore. When they landed the whale hurried after them so fast that he swam right up on the beach, where they killed him and cut him up for meat. The people of the village crowded about to welcome Evango and his brothers and the little lost sister and they all had a fine feast of the meat of the whale. They lived happily after that, and Evango made many presents to the good woman who had helped them to find their sister, so that she was never allowed to want for anything all her life long.